Hey everyone, it's Mr. Jackson again, your seventh favorite fourth grade teacher. So we're going to have a little video for you guys about your Geometry Town project that we hope you'll find it a bit helpful. But before we get started with the video, I do have a bit of a warning. And here's your warning. So yes, guys, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video than maybe you were expecting. But the good news is that we're going to cover everything piece by piece and point by point. And of course, make sure that you pause at any points of the video where I may be going too fast or you maybe didn't hear me or you may just need to go back and do a little review of it. So anyway, so it won't be as long as I think it might be. Let's go ahead and get started now. So, of course, like we just said, we are going over your project for the geometry town and let's get to every single letter. So I'm just going to use the sheet that was provided to you guys on the Google Classroom uh, slides that were sent out to you guys last week. So I'm just going to pretty much go point by point from this particular sheet. So everything that I'm going over, they're going to be instructions directly from the sheet. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, it says name your town. So this is just an example of one of the towns that was submitted by a student who was around your age, around fourth or fifth grade. So it just says name your town. And when you name your town, you guys, you want to make sure that your sign is any geometric shape and make sure that is clearly seen on your project. As you can see, this particular student chose to use a rectangle and name their town Angleopolis. As you can see right there, the highlighted name is in yellow and the rectangle sign is circled in green. All right, so that should take care of letter A. Let's go ahead and move on to the next letter. Looking at letter B, the roads. And of course, the first instruction for the roads is that each road must have a fantasy street name. Now, guys, when we say fantasy street name, we don't necessarily mean it has to be something magical. If you want to make it something magical, you certainly can. But for those of you who don't want to, I just gave an example of just some plain old street names that you might see on any street or they may be made up. Who knows? So as you can see, you have your first street and second street, third street, fourth street and main street. So those are names you may have seen before or they may have just made them up. But in any case, you can come up with whatever name you want. Just try to be as creative as you possibly can. So that's just the first uh, part of the uh, B set of instructions. So let's go to the next part. Still on the roads. And the next piece of instruction is that you must have three parallel roads. Now, what do we mean by parallel roads? Well, we mean three roads that are parallel, which means they are made out of parallel lines. And in case some of you guys have forgotten, let's briefly go over what are parallel lines. And parallel lines are lines that are next to each other. They can be up and down, meaning top and bottom, or they can be side by side. But those lines will never touch, connect, or intersect with each other. And here's a brief example. So guys, as you can see, um, this is an example of a parallel road. The two black lines represent the out parts of the road. And as you can see, those lines, they will never touch each other. If they go on forever, they will never touch, connect, or intersect with each other. Next, let's talk about the perpendicular road. The one perpendicular road, it just means one road that is made of perpendicular lines. Very briefly, what are perpendicular lines? And those are lines that connect with each other and they make a 90 degree angle. It can be like a cross or like a letter T. Here's a bit of a side note because some uh, students get confused by this. If the lines connect, but they don't make a right angle, those are not perpendicular lines. Those are just intersecting lines, not perpendicular lines. So, yeah, so make sure that your perpendicular road is not just roads that are crossing, but they're there are roads that make a 90 degree angle. And here's what I'm talking about. So this example looks like a cross. All right, guys, as you can see, you have your crisscross, your roads here, and your 90 degree angles are here, 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 and here. Also, what about the one that may look like a T? So you have these two examples. This particular road looks like a T, a regular capital T. This is the same road, it's just turned in a different direction. All right, so guys, that takes care of the roads and our buildings. So our buildings, it says you want to create six buildings utilizing or using the shapes listed. Those shapes are triangles, quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons, heptagons, and octagons. And let's very briefly go over what are those shapes and some examples. So for a triangle, we all know that it's a shape with, it says 
four vertices, but that's a mistake by me. That should be three vertices. A vertice is just a little corner. So basically, a triangle is a shape with three sides and three vertices. Never mind that four. That's an error by me that I did not catch when I went over this presentation. So I say I'm good for one mistake a month. That's my one mistake. Anyway, so a quadrilateral is just a shape with four sides and four vertices, such as a square or a rectangle or a rhombus. Or it can just be four sides that make a shape. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to have a name. A pentagon is a shape with five sides and five vertices, as you can see as an example below it. Hexagon, a shape with six sides and six vertices. Heptagon is a shape with seven sides and seven vertices. To make sure you guys can actually see that. Let me try to move this out of the way. Well, I can't move it, but you guys get the idea. There will be a little bit of a line underneath this little section here. And lastly, an octagon is a shape with eight sides and eight vertices, such as a stop sign. So let's get to some examples that you might see on a particular project. All right, so here are some examples of the shapes that we're utilizing here. So as you can see, there's an example of a triangle. Of course, we all know what triangles are. I have an example of a quadrilateral down there in blue. I actually have two of them. I have an example of a pentagon right there. An example of a hexagon, the six-sided figure right there. A heptagon, which is the seven-sided figure right there in yellow, where it just came up. And lastly, the octagon, which is an eight-sided figure like a stop sign. And guys, do not forget, you can stop this video at any time you need to, to pause and go over anything that you may have missed. And so we, uh, the last piece of instruction for our buildings is that it says that each building must have a fantasy name. For an example, this particular one has the building Stars Diner. And again, guys, fantasy name. It just means be creative. Make something up. Um, it can be something that you may have heard on Harry, in Harry Potter or on the Harry Potter movie. I don't think that J.K. Rowling is actually watching this video, so I think you should be fine. But anyway, so, yeah, so just be pretty much be as creative as you guys possibly can. I know you guys are very creative, so I know you'll be just fine. Okay, let's talk about D, the angles. All right, so the angles, as you can see, I'm already, I've already gotten started with uh, some of the angles, so that may be my second mistake. But anyway, identify an acute angle. That's an angle that's less than 90 degrees. As you can see, those are the ones that are showing up in yellow. So you have an acute angle there. It's less than 90 degrees, which means basically that the two lines are getting closer together and not farther apart. There's another example of an acute angle. As you can see, those lines are a little bit closer together than they would be for a right angle. Next, you want to identify a right angle. That's an angle that is 90 degrees and it makes a corner. As you can see there, uh, circled in blue, I already got started on one. So as you can see, that's the right angle there in blue. This other one circled in blue uh, is a right angle as well. And the last one is identify an obtuse angle. In case you forgot, that's an angle that is more than 90 degrees, but it's less than 180 degrees. Now, as you can see in red, we have an obtuse angle there in red. And then we have another one. And also, guys, I hope you notice that those particular lines here and here are going farther away from each other. The same thing here and here. And as you'll notice, the acute angles, those lines are a little bit closer together right here. OK, so those are your angles. And I think that was probably the shortest example we have. So what about the park now? On the instructions, it said to name your park on a rectangular sign. Now, this particular student, they did not name their park, but they did use a rectangle in order to help create it. As you can see, the rectangle right there, but we don't have a name for it. At least I didn't see a name. And then it says to draw a circular pond at your park. And as you can see where the blue star just popped up, they drew that circular pond. And then it says to draw a triangular sandbox. Now, I know a box we usually think of as a square or a rectangle, so you're thinking, why would I make my sandbox triangular? Well, we just want to make you guys be a little bit more creative with that. So as you can see, the example for the triangle sandbox is where that red star just popped up. All right, so let's go on to the next one. So it says for the next letter, F, even though it says E on the paper, that was a bit of a typo when we made it, 
It says you must include eight of the following. And when we say eight of the following, guys, we don't mean eight of each. It just means that out of the whole total of these things that you put in your city or your town, you just have to have eight of them total. So an octagon stop sign. There's an example there that you can see. Rectangular traffic light. A triangular yield sign. And for those of you who may not know, yield just means to slow down and just kind of look around you to make sure that everything's safe. You have to have a vehicle, a car, a truck, a motorcycle, bike, van, etc. And all etc. means is just things like that. So it can be a school bus or anything that's a vehicle that you have to drive. A rectangular park bench. As you can see, that's not a perfect rectangle, but you can kind of see that the overall main shape of this bench happens to be a rectangle. A circular railroad crossing sign, in case you guys have ever seen these out in the, out in the world, you've been driving around with your parents. A rectangular bus stop sign. A garbage can outside of any of the shops that you draw on your town project some trees and some bushes, and some flowers. So guys, make sure that you have at least eight of those different types of particular things on your geometry town project. And last but not least is make sure that you guys include all of those things on those directions and color everything and be as neat as possible. And some of you guys have already started turning in your rough drafts, your rough drafts. I can't even talk right now. And those that look amazing. So guys, we really look forward to seeing your finished products. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any pressing questions, you guys can just send uh, me a message on Class Dojo or email. And once again, I hope this video was helpful for you. And we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and bye.